All right, so the first thing we're going to do is take our standard crank. This one, obviously, we're rebuilding. It's broke a rod. And the, uh, I already have the first two outer bearings on each side and the retainer rings removed. Those are pretty easy. You can just use a, a bearing separator tool. Um, you don't really even need to press for that. Those will come off the, uh, the ends of the, the main journals on each side. Uh, and next, we'll have to press out the crank pins on each side. These are a little heavier, well, a lot heavier pressed. Um, <clears throat> so we will have to use the press for that. All right, so here's the setup for our crank pin pressing. We've got the uh, crankshaft in the fixture. And basically we have a uh, eight ton press. We're gonna heat the uh, counterweight on the, uh, around the outside of the crank pin here and we'll probably uh, hit it a couple times right there with the mallet. Alright, so we have both of the ends pressed off. Here are the, uh, the standard crank pins. And we have the center section left. Uh, and the only joint left is the center main, which is the really tough one. That is um, a tapered press fit. These other ones are just a, a straight cylindrical uh, pin uh, and this has a Loctite product on it that really does increase the the grip um, but what we're going to have to do is heat this really good to break that Loctite free um, and then uh, we should be able to shock it apart with the in the press all right show you that next all right so here's the center section in our fixture um, like I said this is a very heavy press when it lets go parts are gonna fly um, wear your safety glasses I've I have a bar here in front I've got some straps and we want to take precautions uh, when we do this. Okay, so there you have it. This white stuff is that Loctite compound and it really works. Um, if you don't heat it, you're going to need two or three times the press to get this apart. But like I said, that is the tough one. And we'll use the Loctite when we Put that back together or we might just weld this crank at all the joints okay so we have our assembled crankshaft 
installed in this inspection stand. I use this for aligning the outer main journals. And the important thing here is that the shaft is only supported on the center two bearings which are seated on the center main shaft and all the alignments of the outer portions have to come off of this center main. So you can't support the shaft on the outer bearings or outer journals and do this inspection and you can't put this between centers on a lathe. It's not going to work. What you're looking for is that these outer counterbalance weights are <clears throat> aligned angularly correctly and if they're not you're going to get a big indicator run out. Um, and the the factory spec on this is one thousandths to two thousandths depending on which side you're working on. So I've got this pretty close. Um, it's pretty hard to get it less than two thousandths but we're going to show you where we're at right now. I've run these at two thousandths and for 100 hours plus, I mean, that's going to be fine. I'm sure that other manufacturers that are mass producing these are probably not spending this sort of time doing this inspection. But we're going to get it as close as we can possibly get it. So if you watch the needle, our run out is about two thousandths, two and a half maybe. That's on the mag side. And the only way to make adjustments is basically to shift the rotational position of the outer counterweight. And when you do that, you can overshoot and just get in a position where you're going back and forth trying to hit it just right. So that's pretty good right there. We'll check the other side now. Okay, so now we're going to check the PTO side. So that also looks that looks a little better than the other side. I would say it's within two thousands. Show you this a little closer. So that's the best we're going to do with this setup that's homemade and um, I really don't think that you know or whoever's mass producing these crankshafts is going to do any better than that. I really don't. Just from having done several of these um, you know they're probably just putting things in a fixture and slamming them together and I don't know how well they're really inspecting these so um, this is as good as we can get here and it's pretty close to the factory spec again it's one to two thousands run out
And just so to give you an idea of what that really looks like in motion, um, a couple thousandths is really not visible to the naked eye. So I'm going to spin this and you can see for yourself what that looks like. That's very true. I would say that's that's really within the clearance of the bearings themselves because these are a C3 bearing and C3 bearings actually have additional clearance that's really necessary to allow all these different joints to go together for this crankshaft. So that is very true. That is going to be balanced and it's going to seal good. And that's always what we're going for here.